from a lot of you guys that you have loved the spiral rope video and uh, some of you have sent me pictures. I've seen pictures of projects on Facebook where you've played with spiral rope and had so much fun with it. And now the question is, well, what's next after spiral rope? You're not done with spirals yet. Let's do a double spiral rope. A double spiral rope is where you've got two different colors usually, it doesn't have to be two different colors, but two separate spirals going around the rope. It's a little more difficult in that you have to be very careful about where you're putting each color so that the spirals uh, stay distinct from each other. But it makes a much more uh, thick rope and you can do a lot with accent beads and that kind of thing. So uh, it, I think it's a really good technique to know. Let me show you uh, a close up of what kind of rope I'm talking about. This is two different projects that I have done in the past that are double spiral ropes. So this one uh, obviously has the white beads. They're actually a um, uh, frosted kind of white bead. And then the teal beads. And then on both of these spirals, I used an accent size 8 bead in the center there. And you can see how they intertwine together. And it just makes a really beautiful look. On this one, uh, I used slightly bigger beads, um, and on one of the spirals, I used only seed beads. On the other spiral, I used an accent bead in the center, so it gives it just a slightly different look. There are, let's see here, for the, the center spine, uh, on this one I used size 6 beads, on this one I used size 8 beads. I would suggest that a center spine of a size 8 is the smallest that you go on a double spiral because you are making so many passes of thread through those center spine beads by doing a double spiral that if you use, say, a size 11 seed bead, uh, it's going to be too small. You're going to get your holes all clogged up with thread and you're going to not have a happy ending. So a size 8 or a size 6 is your best bet for a center spine bead. So let me show you how we're going to make this. I'm going to kind of put these off to the side here. Uh, just the same way that we start a regular spiral bead, I'm sorry, spiral rope, uh, we're going to start the same way here. So we're going to pick up a number of beads for that center spine. I'm going to pick up four for this example. You can make it longer or you can make it shorter. It just depends on the look that you want to get, how, how elongated you want your uh, loop beads to look. So in this case I'm picking up four and then I'm going to pick up the, f the beads for my first loop at the same time. So what I've decided here is I'm picking up three of this color. I'm going to add a little accent bead so I'm using that same size eight that I'm using for the spine for an accent bead and then another three of that color for that loop. We're going to bring all those beads down so that we have about a four to six inch tail below them. You want enough down here to be able to weave it in later. And then we're going to pass back up through only those first four spine beads that we picked. So I'm going to grab onto this tail so I don't pull it right off. All right, so there's our first loop, our spine and our first loop. But we want this to be a double spiral. so out of the top of every spine bead that we add from here on out, you're going to add two loops. So this is the first loop. Now let's add a loop of the second color. And what I'm going to do is do very similar, same where I'm going to do, I'm going to do three, one, and then three. You're going to pass back through those same four spine beads. Like so. All right. So for right this second, it's fine to just kind of put one to one side and one to the other. Here's where the trick is. Now that we've got two loops coming out of one spine bead, we're going to add a spine bead and the beads for our next loop. When we add the beads for that next loop, you need to make sure that th the color loop that you're adding is, is directly to the right of your spine. Here's what I mean by that. Let me kind of show you what I mean by that as opposed to try to tell you. Oh, you know what? I forgot to pick up my spine bead first. We've got to grow our length. So spine bead first, then three, one, and three. OK, 
Okay, we'll bring all that down so that it sits next to that center spine. And here's what I mean, is I want to make sure when I attach these through the top four spine bead that the top four spine beads, that this loop of the same color is to the right. What I don't want is to be right like this. If I attach this this direction, then this loop and this loop will be in the wrong locations. So you want the same colors to, to stay next to the same colors. This is going to be more obvious as I get a little bit farther into this. So now we're attaching this loop by passing through the top four spine beads. That includes that one that you just added. Okay, so now we've got one loop out of that top spine bead. Now we need to add the other loop. So here's three, one, and three. I do not want to add it here because the loop of the same color is on the left. So I'm going to twist this. And now I'm going to add it right here so that this new loop can sit right next to this loop. So top four spine beads. There we go. And we'll tighten it back up. Just got, there we go. Tighten it. I just got this little loop of thread showing here. I wanted to get rid of that. So it just kind of looks like a mess of beads here, right? So, but just remember, you just need to orient it. So now here I am with this color on this side, and I'm ready to, I've got two loops out of this lat top spine bead. That's one way, so, sometimes you get pulled away and you don't, you come back and you don't remember, did I add both colors or not? The answer is you have to look at this top spine bead and see whether, sometimes you can kind of look at it from the top edge and make sure that you've got if one and two loops out of it. If you've only got one loop out of it, you know that you need to start by adding the second loop. Okay, so since we're growing it, we're going to add one new spine bead. And three, one, and three. Okay. Bring those down because I need to be able to go through that top, that new spine bead. So the top four is what I'm going to go through. One, two, three, four. Watch and make sure that it doesn't accidentally catch on these other loops while you're doing this. Okay, so now that's one side. We're going to get, we're going to go ahead and get the beads for our second loop ready. So it's three, one, and three. I need the same color to be on the right. So here I am flipping it. And now I can go I'm through these top four. What's going to happen as you keep adding loops here is this is going to start getting really tight in here. And you're going to have to kind of pry the loops apart to get to these top four spine beads. Totally fine. You can manhandle this. It's totally normal to have to do that. And what I'm going to do here, there we go. So it still kind of looks like it's just got two sides to it, right? But as you keep building it, then you're going to start getting the spiral action going on. So let me show you. I'm going to kind of switch projects here because here's one that is a little bit farther down the road. So I've already worked this a little bit farther. And you can see how this starts wrapping around. But what you're doing is going to be identical to what you've been, you're just doing that same thing over and over again. So here I am, I've got two loops out of this top spine bead, which means that it's time to add a new spine bead. Pick that up. I'll pick up this, the beads of this first loop. So it's three, one, and three. Okay, look, Mr. Bead. All right. We'll bring those down so that that new spine bead sits against the spine. And see how I kind of have to pry these open to kind of get down to that spine? Like I said, totally normal. One, two, three, four. This is the bead that I want to go into. Here's something else. Sometimes it can be hard to get an angle on that bead to get your needle up through there. It depends on how tight of a beater you are. You can actually bend this a little bit. So if you bend it away from yourself, it'll create a little opening and you're able to get in to those spine beads a little bit easier. 
Oops, let's see here. This is a terrible color for me to try to be working with on camera because the lights are kind of making it transparent. Okay, and then there's that top spine bead. So there I am going through the top four. And do that loop. Okay, so then I'm still gonna turn it and here's where my last red, dark red loop was. So here I'm gonna pick up my three, one, and three. Okay, we're gonna kind of pry it apart. One, two, three, right down in there is the fourth bead. Again, I can kind of bend it over. Or, you know, it's, you're not gonna bend it over. It's not like you're gonna bend it at a 90 degree angle, but you can bend it a little bit so that you, just enough so that it separates, so that you can get your needle in there is the biggest trick. And then back up through all of those. And then by placing that right in that spot, see how that's growing it in the right location. And you're just gonna keep adding those loops over and over again until you get the length that you desire. Um, there is such a thing as a triple spiral. Triple spirals, man, I just, I don't, I honestly have tried it and was, have gotten the holes in the center spine so blocked up with thread that I couldn't get through there. Uh, so you would have to use a fairly large center spine bead to do a triple loop. You would do it the same way where you just keep making sure that the color loop that you're adding is immediately to the right. Let me say though, I'm a righty, so moving everything off to the right makes sense to me. If you're a lefty, go for it. Just make sure that you're consistent and you're moving everything off to the left. Um, so you just have to pick one direction or the other and be consistent with it. Anyway, so the, the triple, sp triple one is done exactly the same way. It's just that you're adding three loops out of every spine bead. So that's where you would have to use at least a size six a seed bead. Actually, a size uh, eight Delica might be a really good option for that. I haven't tried that yet because that has a really big hole in it. Uh, and you would also want to go down to a smaller needle size because that will make a difference too. If you're having trouble getting your needle and thread through those spine beads, going down, if you've been using a size 10, going down to a size 12 needle or even sometimes a size 13 needle will make a big difference. Last tip I have for you is sometimes you can kind of get it, that needle through those spine beads, uh, but then kind of get it stuck. Take a, a flat nose pliers and you can grab onto the tip of that uh, needle and use that extra leverage to pull it through. That makes a big difference in being able to get the, the uh, needle and thread through there. The downside of that is you run the risk of potentially breaking the bead. So you want, don't want to do that unless you're pretty sure that you're going to be able to get it through there without a problem. Um, I think that's everything I have to tell you about double spirals except go forward, have fun. Contrasting colors are easier to work with until you kind of get a sense of the beads and then you can use more analogous colors or even the real big extra credit is using the same color as a double spiral in your double spiral. Happy beading!